So we are going to be talking about histology of the eye in the simplest uh, way possible and this is supposed to be a comprehensive video and I am trying to get you get the most important points across. So histology of the eye. So let's start with the three quotes of the eyeball, right? So we have the fibrous tunica which is outermost. Then we have the vascular tunica which is in the middle and also known as the uvula. And then we have the last one which is the neural tunica also known as the retina. Now 1 by 6, the anterior 1 by 6 of the fibrous tunica is the cornea and the posterior meaning the part that is behind 5 by 6 is the sclera. Right, uh, so some basics about the cornea and the sclera starting with the cornea. So the cornea has a total of 5 layers. From the outside to the inside we have the corneal epithelium and the corneal epithelium is basically it is simply it is squamous stratified non-keratinized and when you're drawing squamous stratified non-keratinized you start with drawing cuboidal cells in the basal layer because the basal layer has the stem cells that continuously proliferate to produce cells that then migrate to the most superficial layers and then you start drawing uh, progressively flatter cells like this and you do this with the histo pencil and with the <clears throat> proper nuclei and you get the squamous or more appropriately stratified because we have multiple layers, squamous, non-keratinized epithelium. So you start with this. And obviously you know that like any keratinized epithelium, there is continuous proliferation of the basal cells and there is continuous desquamation. So these are some important bits and there are a lot of NOSI receptors in the corneal epithelium and that is significant. Then the basal lamina of the corneal epithelium actually forms that something which is known as the Bowman's membrane. Perhaps a better way of showing that would have been to show a homogeneous mixture like this, something that is homogeneous, right? Something that is homogeneous, so that is a Bowman's membrane. Bowman's membrane, actually. And that is... Um, the basal lamina of the corneal epithelium and it's uh, homogeneous like you would expect it to and like any basal lamina it will have collagen type 4 fibrils now because this is not this layer is not capable of regeneration if this layer is damaged it would lead to scarring and uh, blindness after this we have the thickest layer which is the corneal stroma corneal stroma and that is simple connective tissue and it has basically 60 lamella of collagen now what does that mean lamella in the layers in the in the sense of layers so they, they are like 60 layers of type 1 collagen this is a very fibrous layer therefore and the alternating layers are at right angles to each other same as in bone tissue right angle to each other and this orthogonal arrangement of the collagen lamellae is responsible for the transparency of the cornea it is one of the reasons the other reason is the fact that the cornea is avascular and the third reason is the fact that the water content of the stroma this layer is maintained well regulated and that leads to transparency right now the corneal stroma goes by another name which is which you should be aware of it is the substantia propius that is another name for the corneal stroma 
nothing too difficult now we are done with this so we now talk about another membrane situation that is known as the Desmet's membrane and the important thing is that Desmet's membrane is thinner compared to the Bowman's membrane and then we ha it's like just 5 micrometers whereas this one is 8-ish micrometers and then we have the last layer which is the caudal endothelium and like any endothelium it is simply flat cells the reason the corneal endothelium is significant is because first, first of all this whole structure which we have discussed is avascular and behind this we will have a layer of choreo my apologies behind this we will have the aqueous humor so the nutrients are transmitted from the aqueous humor to the cornea uh, via the corneal endothelium and also because this has a, an active role in maintaining the water content over here so any excess water is transported via the corneal endothelium into the aqueous humor so this is the important bit then we talk about the sclera which is opaque unlike the cornea that is the important thing to understand and there are three layers and we're going from outside to inside we start with the episclera the episclera is simple loose connective tissue and the main thing it does is that it connects the sclera to the facial sheath of the eyeball which is surrounding the orbit in which the eyeball is placed so it, it is a more connective function like a lot of lamina propria, propria then we have the sclera proper the sclera proper is very fibrous in fact it is it contains a lot of type 1 collagen And, but because the collagen is irregularly arranged, it leads to the opacity of the sclera as opposed to that of the cornea. Then thirdly, we have the supracoroidal lamina. And it is referred to as supracoroidal lamina because it is just superior, just superficial actually to the choroid. And it is also known as the lamina fusca and it is said that the supracoroidal lamina is in the perichoroidal space between the choroid and the sclera so that is something they can ask you in, in an exam question or in a viva so outside facing the orbit inside facing the choroid the other thing is if you see the sclera from the outside it is white and fibrous and it is smooth you see from the inside it, and it is brown because you are then seeing the supracoroid lamina and it is brown because there is quite a lot of melanocytes in this layer which has led to the layer being brown so this is the most important bit but you and you probably from this you have understood that it is actually a transition space between the choroid and the sclera and it contains plenty of delicate collagen, elastic and even fibroblasts and macrophages. Now we talk about the, the second layer which is the tunica, uh, the vascular tunica. Now we talk about the vascular tunica so the outermost portion is the iris which is attached to the ciliary body. right right and that is in kind of continuous so this is the tunica um, this is the vascular tunica and this then is the pupil which is simply a circular aperture and this is a cross section we are we are this is for example is a uh, parasagittal section so you are viewing this part so this is the iris now the iris has two margins the pupillary margin this is the pupillary margin which surrounds the pupil and this is the ciliary margin which is attached to the anterior surface of the ciliary body this is the ciliary body this is the ciliary body this whole I am actually um, doing this so that you can tell 
which part is a ciliary body so there's a differentiation right so the iris what about the structure of the iris the iris will have a stroma and the iris in addition to having a stroma also has epithelium now the anterior surface of the of the iris does not have any epithelium the anterior surface is composed of the iris stroma and on the posterior surface is there is actually double layer of epithelium so let me draw it like this this is a magnification this is the part that is facing anterior and this is the part that is facing posterior so over here there will be you can say that there is a double layer of q columnar epithelium i know i'm drawing this in a very haphazard manner and in in a section it actually kind of appears like this very blackish because both the layers are heavily pigmented there's a lot of melanocyte in both layers and over here we have the iris stroma and the iris stroma as you would imagine has collagen elastic has the nerve fibers the blood vessels it also has two muscles the sphincter pupillae and the dilator pupillae the sphincter pupillae is a circular muscle and the dilator pupillae is a radial muscle and the sphincter pupillae basically is going to be surrounding the pupil so its positioning is somewhere over here and it is basically smooth muscle 